Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Friday new product post. We've got a few products this week so let's jump right in and see what we've got and we've even got a demo this week. So first up this week we've got the new version of the 5 doff board. As you can see it is very similar to the old one. Um, we did go through and um, revise a lot of things. Essentially it's the exact same board as the last one with a lot of revisions, a lot of footprint changes, and just a lot of tweaks here and there. Um, it does fit into a breadboard. Everything is on 0.1 inch centers. Um, we've just kind of um, revamped the footprints. We had some issues with the IDG 500 footprint um, reflowing through the oven. It just really wasn't working out all that well and we had a lot of bad boards and a lot of issues with that. So we fixed that and it is you know, a completely new and revised board, even though it looks a lot like the old one. Um, but if you're looking for just a very basic 5 doff board, you don't need the full 9 doff, and you don't need something bigger, and you just want something small and simple, check out the new 5 doff rev. And here we've got a new rotary encoder this week. This is very similar to the others that we carry. Um, this is a quadrature encoder. The real difference is this body is a little bit bigger, and this is actually 1,024 pulse per revolution. We do have this um, almost same one in a 200 pulse per revolution. So if you need the extra resolution, if you're doing something very fine, like a balancing robot or something like this, the um, extra resolution might help you out. So we have this one in a 1,024, and then we also have the 200 pulse per revolution as well. And they come with these great little helical encoders, or helical couplers, um, an Allen key, and the actual encoder itself. So check these out as well as the 200 pulse per revolution. And lastly, we have this little guy. This is a mono audio amplifier. Um, if you look at it, it is very small. It's about the size of a quarter. And what this is, is a very small and very efficient audio amplifier. Um, it produces about 1.5 watts, 1.4, something like that, into an 8-ohm speaker. And you might be thinking that 1.5 watts really isn't that much, but really when it comes down to it, you know, alarm clocks, um, you know, some TVs really only have about a watt or two of audio power. So these things can actually produce a decent amount of sound from, you know, a pretty good-sized speaker. So. A lot of our um, sound boards, like a musical instrument shield or the MP3 trigger, things like that, have a headphone out. And you can connect that directly to one of our like 8 ohm speakers, but many of you might have noticed it doesn't get very loud. So if you want to bump that up a little bit and have a little bit more volume from your sound, you might want to check out one of these. You're not going to use these to drive a stereo system or anything like that, but it is very good for getting you know a little bit higher output level than you would get from and just the onboard audio from any one of our shields. Um, if we look at this board, we can see, other than the fact it's really small, um, we've got an input, which is just your signal and ground. Um, we've got the out, which is just the you know red and white that would go to your speaker. Um, we've got a volume right here. And as you can see, it's just a um, silk screen of a potentiometer. So if you hook up a potentiometer to those three pins, you can have a very simple volume control. And all it's doing is attenuating the input signal going into the IC. Um, over here, we've got the um, power, we've got the ground, and we also have this um, signal pin. And the signal pin is really easy to use. If you ground it, it turns off. If you leave it open, it's on. So it's a very easy thing to implement. And we've also got these two um, outlines right here for two different resistors. Those resistors control the gain. So if you were to add two separate resistors to this, you could um, completely change the gain structure of the amplifier. So I think it has something like a, actually I don't even know, I'm not gonna quote, look in the data sheet. Um, the set gain is one thing, but you can add different resistors here to change the gain. So if you want a little bit louder or a little bit lower, you can just fix those in there and you don't have to worry about attenuating the signal coming into it. Ultimately, you want the highest signal coming into it, and then you can adjust your gain on the output level from there. Um, we did do a project with this, and um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we did with the audio amplifier board. So here we have our little demonstration of the mono audio amplifier breakout. So what we have here is a plastic ball filled with a bunch of goodies, and this project had a very nice idea behind it. The theory was fantastic. Um, the implementation, yeah, maybe not so much. So the idea was that old um, saying that if you sit down a bunch of monkeys in front of a typewriter and have them, you know, randomly typing away, that you're going to create a work of art or some, you know, great novel. 
So what we wanted to do was take a um, SpeakJet, an Arduino, a um, couple of these audio breakouts, and kind of um, throw it all together with an accelerometer so that when you move this around, hopefully you would get some sort of, you know, great poetry. And for that reason, we like to call this the Shakespeare. It's just perfect. Um, we're, we're not doing acronyms anymore. That's, that's so last week. Um, so the Shakespeare, if we take a look inside, we've got the Arduino Pro Mini, we've got the um, dual breakout, so we've actually got stereo sound coming out of this thing. Um, we've got an ADXL 335, and we've got a SpeakJet chip underneath there. And then we've got um, one speaker underneath this LiPo, and then we've got another speaker underneath there. And so what this actually does is it has a dictionary inside of um, some of the most used words, and when we shake it or move it, it takes the um, X, the Y, and the Z reading off of the ADXL 345, and it uses that to randomly select different words and add in a delay between the words. <clears throat> and the idea is it's supposed to kind of jumble words together organically through the motion of this thing to create sentences and create just sheer beauty. Well, it does not. It is just one of the most annoying things you could think of. And um, thankfully, in part to the mono amplifier, it's also very loud. So um, let's turn it on and just see how this thing works. Ready. Ready. World made thing there. Not. Not. Utter. If. Give. At. Give. Give. Thing. Thing. On them. World day. Give. All right. So there you have it. This is the Shakespeare, and ah, yeah, it's one of those projects that, in theory, we all really liked it and thought it would turn out to be really cool. And once we built it and programmed it, after about 10 seconds, you just want to turn the thing off. So it was neat. But the thing about this is the amplifiers work wonderfully and for a project like this where you need it just loud enough to hear and you know headphones don't work quite well these little amp breakouts are perfect and we're going to be using these a lot more um, you know things like the cat box um, or things like that where we want to have a speaker hooked up to it this little amp breakout is perfect so there you have it another friday new product post check out the nine off definitely check out the audio amplifier breakout and check out the rotary encoder, and we will see you again next week Ready. with another Friday Ready. product post. Saying new? Try, 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 feel this other, other.